welcome, welcome to the Oli Naz, where a cat has taken over my whole show. She did scare me. You wrong for that kitty. She scared the shit out of me. <laughs> um, I don't know how my volume is going. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Now the kitty's booty's on my face. Um, yeah, welcome to uh, Only Naz. And this one is very important. I, uh, I need to correct uh, a story I, I said in like two episodes ago. Uh, I need to give, uh, I need to give an apology to Alliance Bakery because you was not the bakery I meant to say. <laughs> so to backtrack and go back to my story, I was talking about, well, first of all, it got, it got too it was about it started with you know when someone asked you like where do you see yourself in five years and I, I hate that I'm like you know, I don't I'm alive you know I don't look that far ahead I'm just a day at a, uh, you know a day at a time so um uh, one of the people I dated was you know trying to you know help me out make me go to school give me a job blah blah whatever I was a bum MW was created, I was pretty much a bum. Uh, that's why I had so much time to do so much stuff. Uh, got me a job at a bakery, right? Said, like, apply here. So I'm like, all right, uh, fine. Yeah, I was a bum, Rocky. I was like, fine, I'll go. I'll freaking go to this thing. Uh, it was on a weekend, and uh, the first day was fine. I was uh, applying for delivery. And then the second day, it was all messed up. So the point of my story is that uh, it was not Alliance Bakery. I was totally, I, I, someone told me, it's like, yo, this bakery, I was drove. Uh, who's in Chicago as well. He was like, yo, I, I see that bakery still around. And now you make me not want to go to that bakery. I was like, what are you talking about? Because I distinctly remember that this bakery was freaking closed. I was like, oh, you said Alliance Bakery. I was like, whoa, I did? And I went, I listened back to the to the podcast, and I'm like, oh, snap, I did say Alliance Bakery. I did not mean that. I don't even know why I said Alliance Bakery. It's Bleeding Hearts Bakery. That's the bakery, not Alliance Bakery. I actually like Alliance Bakery. Alliance Bakery is pretty freaking dope, all right? I remember I got a cake for my fiance from Alliance Bakery. Alliance Bakery... No problem. The Lions Bakery in Wicker Park. Great bakery. This one's called Bleeding Hearts. All right. I Googled. I looked it up. I was like, yo, is this mother, is this fucking company still around? This damn thing? No. They are not around. I looked up Bleeding Hearts and it said that. I <laughs> just egged the bakery just for <laughs> I know, right? Imagine, imagine if I was like a really big voice. Imagine if I was like a really big voice, and especially in Chicago. And I said that, and I just started all this hate against freaking Alliance Bakery. And it was like, oopsie, I meant to say Bleeding Hearts Bakery. My bad. What up, Kevin? Kevin WK, everybody. Uh, round of applause for Kevin WK. Oh shit, I don't got my, I don't got my stuff. <laughs> I don't got my stuff hooked up right now. Cause I got this, I got this fat beat playing in the background. Kevin WK was just playing uh, WD2K News. Uh, Kevin WK also from uh, from Chicago, man. Miss you, baby. I miss you real good. Thank you for the subscription. Right? I thought you was holding joint for a second. Yup. So. <laughs> Alliance Bakery, right? Not the spot. Anyways, so it's Bleeding Heart Bakery, and I looked them up because I was like, okay, this bakery's still around, and uh, they are not. Uh, I found an article, and it said that, you know, they close for some reason controversially, so who knows why. Then the, um, the couple, because it was a married couple, they moved to Florida, 
and the husband was diagnosed with some kind of cancer and then like a year or two died from cancer and then (laughs) I shouldn't be laughing but then I felt really bad because I was throwing these people under the bus for because I had a bad experience you know I felt like they were a bunch of come miedas which basically that's the sense I got and you know I just wanted the company to go down but I didn't want all this so then I felt bad you know like they went away there's still a mother and there was still a mother and father you know now the father passed away and then the mother's left alone you know the wife was left alone and all that stuff like I didn't want all that so I hope none of my ill will caused all that stuff but Bleeding Hearts Bakery really <laughs> I had a bad experience alright and I'm, I'm I feel very very bad and I'm very very sorry about what happened to them um all my condolences this was like ages this was years ago so you know it's all I, I hope she's doing great and i hope the kids are well and everything like that but you know don't put that on me ricky bobby don't put that everything that happened was because of me ricky bobby all right i just i had a bad experience and i was just saying out this but i wasn't wrong about how they were treating people the, 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 it, it, it stated that the the employees were complaining there was really extreme work conditions and it was really really bad and that's why the company went down so they deserved it in that sense anything else after that cancer and all that stuff not deserved i don't deserve that anybody i lost my father to cancer it's not i don't wish that kind of ill will so bleeding hearts bakery not alliance bakery alliance bakery is fine it's well they're good go try out alliance bakery Rose's Bakery as well in Humboldt Park. They've been around for like over 100 years. And that's where all the Latinos go and get their birthday cakes. And that's cursed me too. I had a gab bladder surgery yesterday. I played the King of Fighters movie. <laughs> hey, stop fighting. Cats are fighting. Son of a It's never one thing. Don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying not to, man. But you can't imagine, right? When I read this article and I was like, mmm, shit. Like, you know, you say one thing. Like, yeah, I hope you motherfuckers. But I don't really wish it (laughs) anyways I had to clear myself of that because when I found that out I was like damn what up DX I'm in recovery because of you guys you never watch the Halle Berry Catwoman movie now I can't man I can't watch the Halle Berry Catwoman movie fuck that movie but speaking of movies, tonight in the fan chamber, and this is just the freaking podcast uh, version of this thing, but, you know, if you join my stream, I watch movies with my people, and this is uh, the Woman of Badassery Month, so you're watching all the cool stuff, and then I just realized this is the fifth night I watched a movie, which is fitting for the fifth element. Hey, what's good? I do things correctly what I do is on purpose always I would never say it's not on purpose so anyways bleeding hearts bakery that's the one that was the piece of shit and it wasn't all that Kevin you say it was good food I remember trying stuff I was like eh. Yeah. It's like Kuma's Corner. Kevin, do you know about Kuma's Corner when you were here? Kuma's Corner is some spot here that is like apparently like the greatest burger ever. And there's always a freaking line for it. They'll have you wait like crazy. And they always have a real small spot. It's, there's another place like that here called Margie's, but they're about ice cream. And they always pick the smallest spots. I only know two locations. It's a really small spot, and they always have people waiting. It's part of the niche. So Kuma's Corner is the same. I've been there once. It's not all that. All right? It's not all that at all. And it was smoky as shit. Like, fucking open the windows, the doors, or something. I'm eating. I'm in the restaurant eating, and I'm freaking getting the smoke from the kitchen. Come on. My, my girl told me that one time they went for a friend, and then the friend was late to it. 
and they had to wait and there was nobody inside and they still had them waiting because the one member of the party was not there yet instead of having a, oh yeah come on inside and sit down and we'll just you know bring no they still had to wait what the fuck is that Is the fifth element the movie with the girl with three tits? No. That's Total Recall starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Fifth element is probably one of the greatest sci-fi movie ever. That's kind of why I was excited when um, Valorant came out. Because it was by the same director and creator or whatever. Stuff like that. I still think Valorant is fucking dope. Um, but it was not well received by people. Um... I guess it just went right by him. But I think it's a dope sci-fi movie. It's really long, but it's really cool. Based on a comic. <sighs> Uh-oh. It's time to catch up with The Extreme. Let's see what he has to say. After some madness on Friday, I took this past weekend to do some serious thinking. It was, well, well, you spelled that wrong. Wheel? You meant well without the prosperity. I had to quit my job. No matter how hard you try and how much you think you're putting in, you may just never be a fit for certain jobs. Back to ground zero, getting ready to bounce back. Number one, that's the key thing, positive vibes, my way of saying stuff, and thank you. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> um, one should never work in a job that makes you stress out and feel bad. But also, one should always have a fallback. So you had talked to me I would have recommended you stuck with it until you found something else so that way you just but if this works best for you then good and I hope you bounce back quick uh, one thing I learned that one should not be without a job for a long period of time I Thank God I have not been without a job in years since 2007. Yeah. Uh, 2008, really. 2007, I even, like worked one job and then that's it. But since like 2008, I've been just job to job to job to job. And I've been working at the airport for the longest. I've only switched company at the airport, but I've been there for damn near over eight years now. Uh, so, you know, is this why you asked me about the airport? I recommend the airport go to a ramp job. It's easy fucking job. Uh, if you can't do it, then you're not fit for it. But it's an easy job. You just got to deal with uh, the weather. That's it. You deal with the weather. Um the equipment real quick it's an easy freaking job like whether uh i do passengers so that's uh pretty simple and i do international so that's dealing with cargo and passengers if you just do like local you're just dealing with bags and those are smaller planes so you gotta get cut up to be working inside the plane if you're doing just cargo, then that's just some other, that's some whole other level. Those are real big plane, planes, and you're doing odd hours. There's no fixed time for those planes. I don't know, something like that. I don't work cargo because of that situation. I mean, I, there's people in our company who do cargo, and they're just, sometimes the plane coming early in the morning, sometimes the plane coming late at night, sometimes it's an afternoon, they're good, sometimes it's an afternoon, they're stuck there till late night. It's, it's, I don't like that. I like a fixed schedule. I don't like this, like, just random kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, I don't even know what else. I mean, I wanted to do this podcast because I wanted to fix that whole Bleeding Hearts bakery situation. I felt really bad that I was throwing a lion's bakery to them. And, you know, I'm not going to go and re-edit or take down that freaking podcast. I just hope that whoever listens to that podcast, which is like, what, five of you, continue and realize that I made a mistake and I said Alliance Bakery when I meant Bleeding Hearts Bakery. They were the ones that did me wrong. They didn't pay me. They never paid me for that weekend, too. So, fuck you guys. The thing about the job, <coughs> the extreme, 
the screen says the thing about the job I have is working in a this school dr district is being fired basically becomes a dark cloud. So then you can't really apply for other schools. And there were a lot of signs that they were on the verge of firing me. Basically, quit to get another chance at further employment. Okay, well then there you go. See, that was a little sense of information you didn't give out there. Have I ever been fired? No, I've quit. There was a time when I worked for Jewel Osco, which is a grocery, which outside of the Midwest, I believe is called Albertsons, that the manager wanted, basically they wanted me, they didn't want me anymore, and wanted me to quit. And it was constant times of like, hey, if you don't want, if you can't do the job and there's a front door, you're free to walk out because they didn't want to fire me. They wanted me to quit on my own. And being the stubborn guy I am, I did it until I got a job working on the set of The Dark Knight. And then at the same time, I got hired at a seasonal Halloween store and that's when I said deuce because I was gonna stick it out but I got moved to cashier I was doing dairy which was freaking fantastic I got moved to cashier and then I didn't like having to be there until like 2 a.m. and then I got you know the gig at the dark night and I told the manager of the store, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. You should definitely do that. Talk to the, you know, front uh, supervisor. So I went and talked to the front supervisor, and this old white lady was not happy for me. She was like, what? No, how can you do that right now? I need you. Blah, blah. You can't do that. And I was like, but I really want to do this job. Well, if you ever have free time, you'll come over here, right? And work right I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. After that, I said, like, fuck you. Cause there was not, there was no like, oh, congratulations, good for you, I'm very happy. Well, you know, you do that and then you come back with blah, blah. No, there was none of that. It was just like, oh, you can't do that. Turn my face. Fuck that. Seasonal Halloween store is where I met LP, yes. He worked for me that first, it was the first year I did that, yeah. I only did it for two years. And, um, yeah, he worked for me that first year. That's where I met him. So you see, something came out of that. You worked on the set of The Dark Knight? I worked on the set of The Dark Knight, yes. I was a PA, which is like the lowest tier. I was a PA during... It was, it was mostly the part of The Dark Knight at the very end when Batman goes into find the Joker in this building that's not made yet and the SWAT team try to get him and then he gets the SWAT team hooks them up to something and then has them all slide out to the side and hang while there's helicopters going around and seeing that I was there for that so I was there uh, a day or two previously while they were all there uh, practicing doing the stunts helicopter going down we had to make sure we our job was to block off the streets because the helicopters were so low and the helicopters are not be that low so for safety block off the streets um then i also showed up it wasn't like it was it was the day but it wasn't during the filming of you know when they have the big ceremony ceremony on the street for a fallen soldier and one of the jokers guys shoot and everybody panics and they all leave and shit like that uh, I was there for that not for that but I was I was there on the set after they already did it went to catering and I remember seeing um, the guy who played Two-Face what was his name something Eckert Aaron Eckert uh I saw Christopher Nolan. I didn't see no freaking Christian Bale. I didn't see Heath Ledger. But in the catering, that's where Christopher Nolan was at. And then I went to the bathroom to pee. And when I went to the bathroom to pee, lo and behold, Christopher Nolan was there. 
and he was in the in the urinal next to me so i used the urinal next to christopher nolan so that was a trip i remember when we crossed in the, in the hallway it was like hey yeah um and then i got to see them filming the part where you know in the dark night where uh uh commissioner gordon and gary Oldman's in the car and they find out that this well this uh, one of the cops has been is being blackmailed by the joker and that he was gonna you know probably shoot to this guy in there and commissioner gordon's like hey calm down calm down i saw them kind of filming that so i was there and that was the same day and then i think that same day that night that's when they finally did the stunt and i was there and i got to see that scene happen in real time and it's um yeah it was pretty cool then the the following day they were gonna do this they were gonna blow up the building that was the fuck it was a candy building it was one that was historical there and it was abandoned and they were gonna demolish it anyway so they used the demolition for the movie and that's where they blew up the hospital did you peek at nolan's white knight <laughs> no i didn't <laughs> i should have though missed opportunity um yeah the following day uh i was uh the following day was the explosion and a lot of us wanted to be a part of that and i remember talking to the head guy who took care of all the pas and yeah he didn't give a shit about me so it's whatever but i wish i was part of that too it was a it was a cool interesting experience man so i can always say that i was on the set of the dark night that's back when i had connections and whatnot i don't know any connections like that so no i was i wasn't that part of like the batman filming here in chicago one night i got no connection like that my mom always said to be a presentado which means like just be <sighs> nosy or whatever and shit like that and whenever they're filming to so just go over there and be all over the, the place and try to like be nosy and get in but nah man i'm not like that that's not me I haven't got anywhere far it's because of my own doing it because I probably don't need it I don't know I don't try to do too much uh you were in the the extreme was original original space jam I knew you looked like Elmer Fudd I knew it but yeah that's what I did it was good times man good times back then and right now, I watched uh, Rebel Without a Crew with Robert Rodriguez, where he basically, it was the 20th or 25th anniversary of El Mariachi, and he did a short movie about, kind of based on his time in the medical field to get the money for El Mariachi, made into a sci-fi kind of movie with his sons, and um, then while making it, made a behind-the-scenes little short nine episode or six episode of how they did it and it just really inspired me and i want to go out there and start doing stuff my family were extra during the end baseball game didn't get to see my jordan they just needed to record people saying we want michael what's up dog it's me if i'm here with lights and i'm talking it's me it's always me everybody thinks i have a cigarette in my hand is it because it's a white pen <laughs> i should be like listen here kid i gotta have that old 1920s kind of voice all right kid uh, I don't know. I don't got nothing. Uh -huh. I need the fedora. I think that's what my podcast is. Uh, sh the sharpest fedora. All right, kid. I got you. We're going to find this snake. And when I do, you're going to pay me half. The other half that you owe me. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the one in front of me. When I got to type my, my freaking essays. I'm talking about the real thing. The smoker. Uh, the the sh the shooter the 
The typewriter, you get it. I don't know. I, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Once, once I get the fedora, I'll be able to do. I'll be able to pull off the freaking uh, the, 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 the detective, 1920s detective. All right, cool. Because I was wondering where he was. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Now he's gonna go crazy looking for a laser that doesn't exist. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Bad detective, good detective. <laughs> now I gotta drink water after that. <sighs> Parody PSAs? Nah, man. You see, because there was already, before us, there was already uh, the G.I. Joe PSAs, which influenced me, so. I don't step on stuff that's already been done. I'm not really big on that. Yeah. I'm not. I do not work with Randy. I have not worked with Randy in years. I try to bring Randy into my job, and he didn't last very long. Randy does something else. He works with his uncle. I don't know all the information. They're probably putting out bank highs for all I know, but... Randy's good, Randy's well, and Randy will be here with me live Friday, so make sure you be there for that. Um, we're aiming 5 p.m. Central Time and going off into the night, hopefully with Scooby as well, and um, it'll be multi-stream, so on Twitch and YouTube, but if I do anything involving Fan Chamber, which I would love to do, with them that will be only on here on the twitch and of course twitch is the only place where you know you get to use the whole freaking special emotes on the screen and blah 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 blah, blah. all that great stuff so anyways this uh my podcast segment is going down because you know i'm just recording the 30 minutes of course i could make my podcast as long as i want to but then i don't know talk about unless you guys get me keep me going and going and going but also i want to get into the freaking the fifth element it's the fifth night it worked out i didn't it's like right when i was making the when i started this and i realized it's the fifth night it's perfect the fifth element it all fits in um i almost didn't even do this because i came home tired of shit i went to a bar after work uh we all got together uh, a co-worker was leaving i ate a burger that was fantastic i saw aw there with captions the owner was trying to uh, change the channel it's like oh you want me to change it and i was like no dude i'm watching that so <laughs> leave that one tv alone and change all the other shit to the bulls game uh, <laughs> i saw jeff hardy come out and uh i didn't hear you know i can't hear but uh when i saw the clip on uh, off my phone later or you know soon after i heard uh, the theme song and i was like how the fuck they get the hardy boy theme song and then you know after some research i realized that wwe didn't make that track as a production track that you can get the rights to so wwe, WWE does not own the rights to that shit and tony khan did his thing to get the rights to that uh, because it's just a production thing which is like royalty free kind of but anybody can own the rights to it to use it so which makes sense like why i heard it in other places you know like people heard it in other places and i was like yo what is it how are they using the, the fucking hardy boys theme and it's because it's just a, a stock production track that they could use anywhere so these motherfuckers use the stock production track for the freaking hardy boys that's hilarious that is fucking hilarious ask them if they ever check you guys out right away they gave you all props uh, yeah Djibouti does know us and I know Djibouti does well I don't know them personally but they know us and one day you know I told them you know everybody knows that I'll work with them anyways so anyways this is gonna be the end of this um uh podcast but thank you for joining the only nas i try to bring sure i'll make another only nas and i won't give you fake news because <laughs> i gave all the fake news the last time 